Hi, this is Ron, the colorblind artist, and I've been drawing ever since I could pick up a pencil. A few years back, I decided to give painting a try. And not just any painting, I want to paint a masterpiece. So I decided to make these videos to document my journey from a beginning painter all the way to that masterpiece. Now just how far I'll go, we'll just have to wait and see. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. I started this painting off uh, by sketching out my composition with a little mixture of burnt umber and titanium white. Okay, let's quickly go over the colors I'll be using in this painting. And they are French Ultramarine, Cadmium Yellow, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Umber, Titanium White, and just a very slight touch of Mars Black. The reference I will be using for this painting is from a photo my wife took coming home from the grocery store. It was a partly cloudy day, uh, sun kind of peeking around the clouds. I thought it was a beautiful picture. I thought it would make a beautiful painting. And although I really don't consider myself a landscape artist, I do like to do landscapes from time to time. As a matter of fact, I kind of break it up between a portrait, a still life, and a landscape. And I usually have three paintings going on all at once. Just kind of whatever mood I'm in that day. If I'm in the mood for the landscape, I'll work on the landscape. Or if I'm in the mood for the portrait, I'll work on the portrait. And here I'm just kind of mapping out where I want the tree line in the back. I'm not too worried about details. I just want like different zones of the colors and the, and the values in each area. And that was all for like the first day, the first layer. I'll let that dry a couple days and I'll come back. Here I am starting on the second layer. Uh, adjusting colors a little bit, adding a little bit more saturation to the sky, for example. Yeah, when I first started painting, I would probably probably work on it for 8, 9, 10 days with 8, 9, 10 different layers. And the more I'm painting and the more I'm learning, uh, it seemed like I'm doing getting these paintings done in about, about four, four layers, five at the most. Now, my sky color is, is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a French ultramarine with a little bit of titanium white and a touch of burnt umber just to desaturate it a little bit. And these clouds down here are basically the same mixture. I just added some of the permanent alizarin crimson in there because it kind of looked like they were purple. And I just darkened the values up a little bit. I just com compared it to my sky color, and I just made it a little bit darker than that with some of that red in there, kind of warm up the clouds. And at this stage of the painting, my granddaughter came up and said that the clouds looked like there was a, a little dog and a horse and a cat in there. And I'm looking at them, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, maybe I need to redo those. But then I'm thinking, why? I mean, ain't that what people do with clouds, find animals and things in them? And here I'm adding some highlights to these clouds, and a lot of people like to save that for the very end. But it kind of helps me with the values throughout my painting to go ahead and throw some of these light values in there. And I've seen a lot of people who, do, who paint landscapes and, and sunsets and stuff like that, and they always have, like, yellow sun or pink now, i've seen orange clouds and orange sunsets and like that but i was never too sure about you know the color of the sun so i had to ask someone sari what color is the sun it is a common misconception that the sun is yellow or orange or even red so there you have it that's why i decided to paint mine with pure titanium white well for that reason and the fact that on my reference photo, it was completely white. And if you haven't yet, if I could ask, if, if you could please uh, reach down there and hit that thumbs up button for me, I would greatly appreciate it. And here I'm just coming through, working on my sky, giving a little bit more detail, make it a little bit more interesting. And these clouds here, I had to give them like a little form uh, so they weren't so flat and add a little bit of depth to them. And here I'm working on the back tree line there. And what I learned from watching other artists is you got to put these sky holes in these trees so there's like some light shining through them. When I first started painting, my trees were just solid from edge to edge. And I didn't understand why they didn't look real. And like I said, watching other artists, you learn about these sky holes you have to put in here 
so you can see some light shining through the trees. And then I'm working on the outline of the top, uh, top edge of my trees here. And the trick is to make it as random as possible. You don't want it to look like it's uh, like everything's in order, like you got a tree, 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 all the same height and everything. You got to make things as random as possible. And, and that'll help it also look more realistic. And then you just do it, you know, I do a little area. I'll step back about, you know, eight, 10 feet, take a look, see how it looks, and then adjust from there. And what I decided in doing that, when I step back, I'll have a reference photo on my phone and I'll hold it up to my painting, which is about 10 feet away. And I'll hold my phone out at arm's length and I'll compare values to my reference photo on my phone to my actual painting. And I decided these trees needed to be darker. And this is the area where I used a touch of uh, Mars Black. In it. But the only area I used black, I used the uh, French Ultramarine, some Cadmium Yellow, and some black to darken these trees up a little bit. And as for the grassy area here in the foreground, uh, green is a very hard color for me. And I, I believe it's probably a hard color for just about anybody who paints. But I just mixed up, a, you know, different piles of green on my palette, some with more yellow, some with more white, different saturations, different values. And I just started laying down some so it looks kind of like rolling hills of green. I'm constantly stepping back about every couple of seconds every, or every couple of minutes, comparing it to my reference photo and adjusting as I need it. And I decided that the area on the right side was probably in shadow of these big clouds here. So I kind of made the right side a little bit darker than the middle. I, I really didn't see it on my reference photo, but I decided to give it a little extra added touch. And then once I got the color of my grass here in the foreground, I came back in here and put a shadow in the tree line. Uh, the trick here was it had to be darker than the grass, but it had to be lighter than the trees. And also I didn't want any sharp lines on the edge of the shadow, so I just came back in here with a dry brush and just softened up all these lines in the shadow. And if anybody is interested in contacting me for any reason, questions or concerns, they can contact me at thecolorblindartist67 at gmail.com. And now we're getting to the fun part is making these sun rays coming off the sun. I had done this earlier, but I didn't like the way it was, so I had to repaint it and because my hands were too shaky. So I got some painter's tape to make these sun rays to keep these lines nice and sharp. And I know I said earlier that the sun itself was pure titanium white. These sun rays, I used titanium white and quite a bit of paint thinner. And I had just a touch of the cadmium yellow in there just to warm it up a bit. And as you can see me struggling to get this tape off here, uh, the painter's tape did the trick. I thought it turned out pretty good for making these sun rays. Now, as for the smaller little rays coming off the sun, I just freehanded these. And again, I had a little bit of yellow in there. And as I'm building up on these rays, uh, again, I, I had my paint really thin and I slowly built it up. And the actual glow coming off the sun was yellow, but the sun itself, I, I made sure that I didn't get any of that yellow on the sun. I just wanted like the, the glow to be yellow. This was the first time I ever attempted to paint the sun, and I was pretty happy with how it turned out. The funnest thing about painting clouds is that you you really can't make a mistake. A cloud's come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and forms, and you know as long as you got the values right, uh, clouds normally turn out pretty good. More than likely, I'm probably going to be doing more paintings like this in the future. My wife took about. Oh, I don't know, 10, 12 photos, and just about every one of them would make a nice painting. So I'm probably going to do more of these paintings in the future. Currently, uh, other paintings I'm working on now, I'm working on a, another bouquet of flowers. This one's going to be a big bouquet of pink roses. And another painting I'm working on is a brand new painting of my newborn grandchild, Freddie. He's only about two weeks old. And that's the portrait I'm working on currently. And also, I am editing my video, part one of three, of my very first attempt at a masterpiece. It's called The Anticipation of Mary. It's coming soon. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and God bless.